What are sandcastles? What are sandcastles? Now, Merriam Dictionary, and I disagree with this one, says it's a small model, but a lot of them now seem to be needing some planning um, approval because they're so huge. But a structure made with sand on a beach. So you have these structures made with sand and water, and that's it. Now, I would love to say that I can make a decent sandcastle, but that would be a straight up lie. The closest I get to a sandcastle will be a bucket, some sand, you put it upside down, you pull it up, and hopefully by the time you get it up, it doesn't crumble to the ground. I'll do that for a couple, get frustrated, and then what, I will give up. But no, some people have these as competitions worldwide, even Bermuda has them. And to see how people actually make a sandcastle is interesting. They have tutorials on it, they go for growth, they go everything on it, and they are incredible. Now, I found a couple of pictures of some sandcastles, and I thought it was interesting as I looked up. Now, the tallest sandcastle worldwide by Guinness World Book of Records is 69 feet 5 inches of sand and water and patience and structure. And this was done by a Dane back on July 2nd, 2021. Now, obviously, a lot of effort and passion went into this. And it was so much so that it lasted for six months. And I was wondering, how does a sandcastle last for six months? Well, I don't know. But they, it stayed up for that long. But guess what? On the seventh month, it was gone. On the seventh month, it was gone. How it left? Maybe somebody boarded it, knocked down, but it did not stand. Now, the base of this was 30 meters, and it took more than 6,400 tons of sand to make. That's a big structure. It was visited for six months by the public. Now, the thing is, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how wide, intricate, or otherwise, sandcastles or anything else that is not of any form does not last forever. Handmade, man-made, it doesn't last forever, and it's not going to. It was a beautiful, soulless structure. You couldn't move into it. You couldn't live in it. Nothing. It is what it is. It was sand. Beauty, enormous, but temporal. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Matthew 24.35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In our efforts, the man-made stuff, we just had only two verses that tell us that nothing, if it's not God-made, will not last forever. And we can only depend on the God-made things that will last. So let's go into the scriptures and find out how a gift from God made mankind last forever if we choose to live forever in him. My following three points are, number one, our father's breath, real deal. Point number two, yep, I'm going here, Android's breath, none. And point number three, forever breath, our choice. And my key verse for today is Romans 10, nine. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, let's go into the first point. Our Father's breath, real deal. Genesis 2, 7, 8 says, And the Lord God formed men from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the men whom he had formed. In the beginning, God. I'm going to say it again. In the beginning, God. And we could just stop the sermon right here and call it a wrap. 
because there was nothing else but in the beginning, God. In the first verse, the first sentence in the first book of the entire Bible, God is mentioned first. The law of first mention, the most important. There is no doubt that with this declaration that he is and is also the beginning. No one else, nothing else. Point done. In verse three, we are told that the first word spoken by God is let there be light. This shows that God was not only the beginning, he was in the beginning. He is a God of action, he is God of purpose, and he is a God of let, because he didn't have to let anything. His divine purpose started creation. Now we have a list of the days of creation. Number one, it was light. Day two, it was atmosphere and firmament. Day three, dry ground and plants. Day four, sun, moon, and stars. Day five, birds and sea creatures. Day six, land animals and humans. Day seven, the Sabbath and he rested, which means God was not a lazy God. God was a working and is a working God. Now we go into further into the creation as we read the account of Genesis 1, 26 to 28. And let's just do a little housekeeping. So Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to him, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. As we see in verse 26, that small word let, he allowed, he permitted it, he allowed it to pass. However, there's a difference. In the same verse, we are introduced to the word us. Can you imagine the discussion between the Trinity about let us? It was a purposeful discussion to have us let dominate over all of the other creation. What a trust, a Trinity trust that God had in mankind a godly trust. God made mankind different from all others. We were purposely fashioned after him. We have also learned from our catechism that man was created to glorify and to enjoy him forever. In Revelation 4.11, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Point to yourself and say, you know what? Mankind is a special order. I am specially ordered. We are special ordered like no other because we are specially made to give him praise, to give him honor, to give him glory for everything he has done for us. Thank you, Father. Now we go into our verses. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now between chapter 2, 1 and 6, it's a summary of chapter 1. The way it's written is called Hebraic, which means that sometimes in Hebrew, they had a summary and then later it was filled out longer so we can understand where the summary came from. So that's how that was written. So if you read verse two, one to six, 
you're going to find a summary of what happened prior to, and you read that in chapter one. Isn't that fabulous? Now, there are some who take issue with this, but you know what? It doesn't change the Bible. God created man. We have the Hebrew word for breath, and it's ruach. Doesn't that sound like a breath? Ruach. And the definition is a puff that is wind, angry or vital, breath, divine, inspiration, intellect, concretely an animal. Now, can you imagine in God's, in your mind, in your eye, God was on earth. Our heavenly father took the time to come down to this earth to put his hands actually in the earth to create mankind. Now the breath wasn't in the vessel yet. He wasn't named in the passage yet. And if you think the vessel without the breath is a corpse. God had a dead corpse in his garden. Now, it doesn't mean he didn't do anything with it, but all the intricacies took place. He intricately did our inwards, and then he dealt with the outer. But we didn't have life. We were still a non-living thing. Now, with the intricacies done, or however God did it, God took the most basic element that there is. It was dust. Absolutely nothing. Nothing special, lowly, humble, next to nothing. Has anyone ever expressed that you're poor as dirt? That you're running out? You have next to nothing left? Or how about this one? You're old as dirt. This is what I decided to do. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says old as dirt. Because if I understand that God made that from dirt and it's lasted all this time, that is an evangelistic moment that you know what? I could be as old as dirt. God made me. So yeah, I will be old as what God made me from. And then maybe we could talk about salvation later. But yeah, I will advertise. Yes, I am proud to be old as dirt. Isn't that it's just, it's awesome. We are a house of dirt. God took his divine breath and blew in that lowly, poor, below nothing dirt and mankind became a living soul perfect intelligent strong healthy his so you can look at yourself in the mirror when you're feeling down and you take a look a close look and you look at your face and you say you know what god made me out of dirt for some reason his breath is still in me for some reason i have financial problems they may be dirty they may be dusty dog please come and blow on that lord your children may be acting up they're in a whole pile of mess a whole pile of dirt lord take your breath and please just give a breath on them lord lord we don't know the job situation is terrible lord full of mess full of dirt lord take your breath and just blow on it lord because it's his divine breath that keeps us. What a bonding moment. And I mean, I've never birthed children, but I've seen the whole skin to skin when it's a newborn and they put it on the chest. Well, you know what? He took us from particles to pinnacle. We had a soul to flesh moment. Can't get any better than that. If you think now, go back to our own lives. Some may wake up in the morning and pull on a cigarette. Their first breath would be breathing in cigarette smoke. Some may get up in the morning, go on their phones and hit up some gossip. And their breath will be talking about everybody else. Some will go ahead, roll a joint, and that's the first thing that they inhale in the morning when they wake up. Some may even curse God first thing in the morning with the breath that he gave them. So how can we be so selfish and not even take a thank you, God, for what you have done? Thank you, Lord, for bringing me through. Thank you, God, for giving me another day. We just don't know. We cannot take that for granted. We cannot take that for granted. And in the perfect realm of Eden, in the perfect realm of Eden, 
he took us up and he put us in another special place in Eden. He put us in the Garden of Eden. Now, again, I had another thought about this because I, I love the book of Genesis. The Garden of Eden was part of Eden. In the temple, you had the Holy of Holies. God took us from outward and put us into the special part of Eden. He put us into that special place and he just didn't put us into that special place. He planted mankind in that special place. So that special place was seeded with the miracle that God had. So that seed was taking root. So when you talk about the Garden of Eden, I now call it the womb of Eden because that place was so special that that's where God put it. So he took us out and that's why when the womb happens, it's a special place for growth. It's the womb of Eden. Now then I, another thought I had was how, now did, uh, Pastor Seaman, I'm not going to chapter three because I'll be there all day because you, know uh, you know how I am with that chapter. But I thought, how is it that Satan got into that special place? Because Satan's not going to hang around anywhere. He's going to go to the heart of the matter. So Satan went to the heart of the matter. He went to where the two trees were and the heart. And God's like, well, why not? Satan was in the heart of the matter in heaven. He was already there. But this is before the fall of man, so I'm just going to keep it out of balance. So the Garden of Eden, the womb of Eden, the perfect atmosphere, the perfect everything, and God's intellect went straight into Adam or the man. And we have so many people worrying about the green this, the green that. That was the best sustainability that the world has ever seen. The balance of nature, the balance of man in the perfect spot, in the perfect place. And all that was the real deal by God himself, nothing other. I can't tell you how many times I've read that and just completely missed that wound part, just completely missed it, but it was so special. It was so special. So we weren't around, but look at what we have to look forward to in a special place, because I will say this, God made us out of that dust. He didn't make us out of fairy dust. He didn't make us out of gold dust. He didn't make us out of uh, diamond dust. He didn't even make us out of the dust of the 12 layers of the New Jerusalem and how precious those stones were. He made us humble. And he also made us humble so that we can also understand that we are but frail. We're frailty. And we will always need him. We will always need him. Revelation 21, 1, 2, 3 says, and this is what we have to look forward to, a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. What a beautiful picture. And we are now trying to get back to Genesis 1 and 2. We're going to be back in the room. Isn't that wonderful? But could that be enough? No. There came chapter 3. And I'm just going to park it right there and leave it there for today. We all know what happened. And uh, we just thank God for redemption. I'm just going to say that. Let's get to point number two. It is Android's breath. Android's breath, none. I would like to uh, have this short video clip played now because it's just incredible to see how far we've come. Do you believe in God? I don't believe in anything. What's your name? My name is Annika. What is your name? Michael. How Michael. Can you look at me? Of course. Hello. What color is my jacket? Your cut. Your jacket looks black. Oh wow. What color is my hair? 
I cannot tell you exactly, but I would guess brown. Good guess. Am, Thank I, you. am, am I wearing a watch? Yes. My cameras detect a watch. Wow. What color is your hair? Well, I could not tell you the answer to that. Are you impressed by me? I am. I am. That was Amica. She has made the rounds on talk shows. She has made the round on late night show she has made the round all over the place amica i think it was friday night in preparing for this i looked further the androids today and this was maybe a few years ago you couldn't tell it from a human being it's incredible it is incredible i'll go a little further it's artificial intelligence and two words which i'm sorry I never think they go together, artificial intelligence. I just, it just baffles me. But artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. AI is here to stay, just no other it's here to stay. You have Siri, you have your vacuum cleaners that run around on your floors. You even now have lawnmowers that you could plug in to get them all wrapped up. You have all types of stuff. Now, AI was developed in the 1950s. Now, can you imagine what it was like back then? Up until 2023. I remember as a young child, my sister and I would sit up and watch Saturday morning cartoons and one cartoon that came on, meet George Jetson. Remember the Jetsons? His son, Elroy, remember? His daughter, Judy. But the one thing that I wanted was Rosie the Robot because I was determined that I was not gonna be clean in my house. When I grew up, I wanted a Rosie the Robot. Hey, why not make life easier? Give me Rosie. The thing is, there is a Rosie the Robot. It's a whole lot of them but they don't look like her. Not only that, if you ever remember The Wizard of Oz and The Tin Man, I only want a heart. He had a heart and the wizard gave him a heart. And always, even when I was young, like, well, how could that be? How could anyone give you a heart? He was hollow. So how can he receive a heart that works and give him emotion? I never understood it. Now, to be clear, AI is not without its advantages. It helps us with health issues and, you know, we need quick answers. And even for war, there are going to be armies of androids. You blow them up, you don't have to worry about human sacrifice. You know, you can go to the 200 million man army in Revelation. Are they all going to be android? We don't know. But I'm going to tell you what, I'll tell you what, the programming is out there. We don't know. Now, the peril is, is that this is now replacing human interaction. The reproduction is going to start going down. The jobs are going to be lost. The economy is going to tank. And I, if this sounds doom and gloom, I'm sorry, but it's already been shown. And as, and I think she's on, Mother De Silva said, what about the pension fund for seniors? If you have all of this, who's going to pay into a fund that's going to help humans in their later life? And I'm like, you know what, that is so profound because it's all a watershed effect. Now, a lot of these changes are good, but there is a dark side to this. And I think it's darker than we all think. And that dark side is celebrated. Now, there is a couple of definitions that I have. I've never heard these words before. The first one is deep fake. Deep fake, an image or recording that has been convincingly altered and manipulated to misrepresent someone as doing or saying something that was not actually done or said. Now, Chat GPT, Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformer, is a large language module based chat box. Remember chatterbox that you people used to call you? A chat box originally chatterbot 
is a software application or web interface that aims to mimic human conversation through text or voice transactions. Okay, one more. How does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT relies on GPT-3.5 language technology, which was developed by OpenAI. Now, OpenAI was a company that has since which become under attack due to competition. And one of the major stakeholders of OpenAI was Elon Musk himself, okay? Harnessing the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning, it processes written input from users and creates responses that mimic the way a person would reply. So, sounds like in the spiritual world, we need to watch out for deep fake prophets. Now, can we go to the next video? Have I ever told you the story of the magical pistachio? I got lost in the grocery store and couldn't find my way out. But that's when I saw it, a glowing pistachio. It spoke to me and said, follow me and I'll lead you to safety. So I followed it and we climbed up shelves and found a secret passage that led me to the bread aisle. And that's how I found my way out of the grocery store, all thanks to the magical pistachio. So if you ever get lost, just remember all you need is a little faith in a magical pistachio to guide you to safety. All you need is a little faith in a magical pistachio and it will guide you to safety. Wow. And the thing is, did you notice that it was all on an MSNBC backdrop and everything else breaking news? So everything in that was AI. Everything in that was AI. Now, people can say whatever they like about Joe Biden. They call him all sorts of names, but everything was computerized. Hollywood, the writers had a strike because of AI, took their business. They weren't getting the business. The actors went on strike because there was a blitz this summer where AI went out and there were so many different things said by so many actors, but they weren't. It was all digitally made up. All of it. It's a huge, 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 huge industry. But not only do public figures have to look out, we have to look out for it in the church. Now there's a church in Germany, it's a Protestant church, where their pastor for a couple of Sundays was a robot. It was an avatar. Yep. And what happened was the pastor, the, 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 the real life pastor, <laughs> Who would have thought? He said that the church, the church had dropped away so much that they decided to bring in the avatar and the church was packed. Not because of the word, but because they wanted to see what was happening. Now remember, these avatars don't have a spirit. They have a programmer, a human programmer. Now, 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 says, to refute this, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. However, 2 Peter 2, 1 to 3 says, and it false teachers and their destruction, but there were also fake prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. But their greed, in their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Second Corinthians 11 to three, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Let's be clear, the beauty of 
point one, God's breath, the real deal. And you could feel the spirit of God moving. And you know that he moved us to a special place because we were special to him. And he gave us his part of his intelligence is the complete opposite of what's now happening in churches. No divine breath, no anointing. It doesn't have a soul. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't care about redemption. It doesn't care about humans. It does not care about teaching or preaching or dividing up the true word of God. It depends on a programmer. Now, Dr. Woods, this one's for you. From our catechism teaching, we know that these robots, humanoids, fembots, whatever you want to call them, six million dollar man, I don't know, but whatever you want to call them, they have no heat, they have no light, and they have no power. No matter how much they are programmed and they are obedient only to their programmer, they don't have the divine breath and they have never been saved by grace. And the cross means nothing to these people. And yet you have a whole congregation full of people going up listening to this mass. They do not know our Lord. The virtual things cannot offer up a sweet smelling savor to God. Now there's a gentleman named G.R. Beasley Morey, and he says this, the appearance of a Sardis church is that one of a beautifully adorned corpse in a funeral parlor and not the Lord deceived. And he wrote a book and it's on page 95. The church needed to stir up the living spirit of God in order to come to life. And Matthew 23, 27, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. My question to the church, is the church asleep at the Bible? Not the real, are we asleep at the Bible? Or furthermore, are we asleep at the cross of Jesus? Are we asleep? Dynamic deception is on the increase and humans run the risk of being deceived by programming of AI. Is a program AI tickling our ears, giving us what we want to hear? Revelation 13, 14 to 17. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breathing to the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Our world is now truly trusting nothing and verifying everything. Wake up, church. Wake up. There's a great falling away. Do not be deceived by something that does not have the spirit of God. Don't deep fake ourselves. Shields up. Shields up. Point number three. Forever breath, our choice. The key verse, Romans 10, 9. For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. As in point one, God breathed his breath in a breathless form instantly making mankind become alive and the breathing soul. Even with the separation and split of all mankind due to Genesis 3, God has provided redemption from sin through his son, Jesus Christ. Because we are sinful, it does not change our God. God does not change because of us. In fact, we were, as I said before, created to glorify and enjoy him forever. The intent of mankind does not change. The purpose of mankind does not change. 
It was God's purpose in the first place. So we as mankind have a choice. Do we choose the divine breath of God to avoid eternal damnation? Or do we choose not to choose, which will give us eternal damnation? So my suggestion, open up our mouths and ask Jesus to come and save our souls because you cannot get around it. There is no way around it. In Revelation, we have been taught of a better word that we have, of this word that we have been warned. Judgment is coming to everyone. We will either be standing at two seats, one of the judgment seat of Jesus, that's gonna be for the Christians, and one's gonna be at the great white throne judgment. That's for those who either didn't say or curse God. And guess what? The androids are gonna be in a landfill somewhere. They're not even gonna be around filling up the land. It's ourselves that are gonna be on trial or gonna be rewarded. Where shall we be? With what breath do we choose? With what breath? We will be in heaven praising God in our bodies. And I don't know what our bodies are gonna look like, but in our bodies, or will we be getting regenerative bodies for hell? It is our choice. We're getting back to Genesis 1 and 2. We're getting back to the womb of God. What do we choose to do? We need to make Jesus our savior today. There's just no way around it. It's not flowery. We don't want to burn in hell. We don't want this house to burn away. And I, let me just have a, and this was my shortest point. I'm almost done. But there was an evolutionist and I don't remember his name. And he said that he believes that mankind were regenerated from a germ and how, for lack of a better term, I'm not a scientist, how it got into apes and that's how mankind became and all this type of stuff. Well, guess what? He doesn't believe in God, but if Jesus tarries and he dies, his body is going to be a testimony to whom God is because his body is gonna turn back into dust. It's not going to turn into an ape. It's going right back to what God blew on in the first place. So it's going to be a circle. So I suggest that man to get himself together and get on board. Because with that scientific mind, who knows what he could do for Jesus. So as I close today, I ask for us to remain a pure vessel for God. That God did not waste his breath on us that he did not go ahead and house himself in us through a breath and then go ahead and make us out of dust. Yes, I'm old as dirt and I'm proud to say it, that God himself created me and he's keeping me and he's fortifying me and he's breathing on all my dusty stuff, filling God's breath with what we have. That's what we need. And I would like to say blessings abound and thank you. I'm going into the altar call. It's not gonna be long. Altar calls aren't meant to be long because I do feel that they will lose people if they are dragged out so much, people will tune away from them. But they need to be pointed. God does not want you to be in hell. And he didn't create you for nothing. So if you've been running from life, running from this, running from that, and you are tired, and you know better, or you're seeking for a church, you're seeking for a savior outside of what you're doing now. Come to Jesus. He is gently waiting, but I will say this, the time of his grace, of God's grace, has an expiration date. We don't know what day it is or what time, but the time is coming soon. So I ask you right now, if you would like to pray with me so that we can lead you to Christ and, and we can get you in a, we can get you in a, we've got to be, rooted in the Bible. Remember the osmosis. Let the seed be planted and the osmosis of the Holy Spirit come in and let Jesus come in and wash you clean. Because you've got to get the seed planted because we don't want it to be washed away like a sandcastle. We don't. So if you would like to pray a prayer of salvation, 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. 
that he is waiting for us. So if we can pray, if you can say with me, Lord, I've been running for a long time and I'm tired. Father, I know that Jesus, I've heard of this Jesus man before and I wanna to get to know him even further. Jesus died for your soul, he died for your sins that you may become clean and to be with him forever. So Lord, I ask that you come into my heart to wipe me clean, start me afresh, that my life begins with you so my name could be in the Lamb's book of life. And that one day when you come back, even if I am dust, I will know who you are by the spirit that you gave to me and be resurrected with you. Come into my life, come in, to come in today to stay. Lord, I give myself to you. I give myself to you. I turn back from my old life and look to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done through your agape love for me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.